had a question about liposomal vitamins. So let's just talk about exactly what it is and the pros and cons. Pros, it can greatly increase your absorption by a factor of four to nine times. Now, liposomal vitamins are vitamins that are packaged in these tiny little nano size liposomes. Now, liposomes is a spherical or round sac of a phospholipid molecule enclosing something, like a vitamin. They can also do it with drugs as well. And the purpose is to carry it deeper inside the body. There are three different sizes of this liposome. The larger size, which is like 500 to 5,000, the medium size, which should be 200 to 800, and the real small size, which should be 20 to 150, which is the highest quality. So the smaller size, the higher quality. And if you're going to do liposomal vitamins, I would make sure it's verified by a lab using laser dynamic light scattering technique, okay? Because if you don't have it certified, chances are you're not getting the most quality uh, particle size. You're going to get larger size particles, which are lower quality, and they're not going to absorb nearly as much. Now, the con is that if you're getting the higher quality one, it's very expensive. That's one drawback. Second drawback is that your own macrophages, which are immune cells that eat different things, they tend to break down these. They tend to compete so they can dismantle some of this nutrient. But I think the biggest con is that a lot of times companies use synthetic vitamins. So here you are, you have this amazing delivery system to drive in nutrition, but what are you driving in the body? A synthetic vitamin, especially when you see the liposomal vitamin C that is using ascorbic acid, which is usually from GMO corn, and even if it does have the L attached to it, which is the natural version of ascorbic acid, you're still just getting one little tiny part of the vitamin C complex. You're not getting the whole complex. You're getting one little piece of this whole very complex structure. And a lot of times they'll use it for the B vitamins, which again, um, they're mostly synthetic. So you'd want to make sure that they're not synthetic. And so you would want to call the company and ask for the source material. What do they make it out of? And then you might say, well, it's just natural. Well, you want to know what is the source. And they, they won't be able to tell you if it's synthetic. A lot of times they'll use B12, which again is synthetic. And then vitamin E, it might be natural. Uh, so if it is natural or they're using a turmeric, for example, like an herb, uh, that would be fine. But anytime you're using synthetic vitamins or fractionated parts of a vitamin complex, even if it's natural, um, I personally don't recommend it. All right, hope that clarified what it is. Thanks for watching. So there's this hidden source of heart attacks that rarely does anyone know about. And this is a book by Thomas Levy, MD. And so I'll put the link down below, but it was actually quite fascinating because I have personal experience with what I'm gonna talk about. Let me first jump to the smoking gun, okay? I'm going to tell you what he states in his book. In 78% of 101 patients with myocardial infarctions, that's heart attacks, and occluded coronary arteries, they found DNA of pathogens typical for infections in root canal treated teeth. Now, this is pretty wild. I've talked about this briefly in another video, but the big question is, what are these pathogenic biofilm microorganisms doing in your heart? How do they get there, and what's the relationship to your teeth? Now, they also found these microbes also in the clots in certain stroke victims, too. Just a quick story. I went to the dentist uh, a while ago, and um, they were just doing a routine checkup, and he had this really cool... So I think it was called a 3D cone beam imaging system where they basically can scan all the roots of the teeth and look uh, deep inside for potential cavitations or like infections underneath the teeth. Now, I was also an x-ray tech before I was a chiropractor, so I was interested in to see what was going on. And so when I was looking at my teeth, I noticed there was this like huge dark little circle around one of my tooth roots. Of course, he looked at it and said, yeah, you have a you have an infection going on in your tooth. Now, I had no symptoms whatsoever. 
So basically this infection, which is an abscess underneath a tooth, was eating away my bone. And so based on this book, it's the chronic long-term infection that can become a problem for people, not just for heart problems, but for arthritis and many other issues. And apparently it's quite common. If you look up uh, the condition's name, it's called chronic apical periodontitis that many times doesn't have any symptoms. So basically as you're chewing and things, you're pushing this bacteria deeper into the lymphatic system in your jaw and uh, throughout the body. And Dr. Levy uh, points out some really interesting data. There's basically between 15 and 25 million people a year that get root canals, okay? And uh, his theory is that the root canal is where the problem is because when they do a root canal, they go in there, they take out some of the pulp, and they try to sterilize it, and then they seal it. The problem is they also at the same time take out a lot of the tubules you have like one or two miles of these small little tubes. And so as you scrape away this, you take away the immune system as well. So here we have this potential for pathogens to create problems because it's nearly impossible to get rid of all the pathogens when they do this procedure. And so there's a high incidence of people with uh, dental abscesses and uh, chronic inflammation of uh, the root of the tooth or the gums and people who have heart attacks, which is actually very, very interesting. And many times this is missed on routine dental x-rays. One way that some people might pick it up is through a blood test looking at the C-reactive protein, which is just like a biomarker of inflammation. This infection could be in the tooth, it could be in the gums, it could be deeper into the jaw, and it can even be in the tonsils. It's the chronic exposure to these pathogens that create the problem, especially if your immune system is not strong enough to counter it because these pathogens are creating a lot of what's called oxidative stress. Okay, now oxidative stress is basically a situation where you have a lot of free radical damage, but we don't have enough antioxidant reserve to counter that situation. I mean, think about how dirty the mouth is. You have over 500 different strains of bacteria, viruses, and fungus growing in your mouth. And then you also have this byproduct of the microbe, which is toxins that can then create more immune reaction, more inflammation in different parts of your body. Apparently, one of the ways the body reacts to this situation is by developing clots. And so over time, when this becomes more chronic, a person's going to generally feel fatigue, chronic inflammation, jaw problems, and sensitivity of the teeth. In my situation, I did notice when he removed the tooth, I immediately noticed my inflammation in my upper back and neck just kind of disappeared. So that was fascinating. But if I didn't get that x-ray and see that uh, cavitation, I never would have guessed that would be the cause. But basically, we're dealing with a leaky bacterial overload situation that kind of causes a compromise to your immune system. But let's just say, for example, someone has this infection, right? And they feel a little tired, but they don't really know if it's coming from this area or not. You feel like your immune system is compromised and you are wondering if you have this oxidative stress overload situation. Uh, what you could do is just take uh, one or two grams of liposomal vitamin C. It's not the vitamin C complex to fulfill a vitamin C deficiency. We're primarily using it as an antioxidant to lower the oxidative stress. And what's unique about this specific type of vitamin C is that it's one of the only ones that can go intracellular. I'd recommend taking maybe 500 milligrams several times a day. And this is because vitamin C is water soluble, so we just wanna keep it flowing through your body. And the last point about this type of vitamin C is that it won't create diarrhea when you're taking large amounts like other types of ascorbic acid. But that would at least change the ratio of this antioxidant to oxidative stress level to see if that might help you. And if it does and you feel a little bit better and you feel like your symptoms might improve, then you can start to dive deeper into why you might have this problem. Is it related to diet? Is it related to not sleeping? Is it related to over-exercising? Is it related to a potential tooth infection? But this is just a short overview of this topic. I would highly recommend getting this book. It's filled with a lot more data. It's actually 
quite fascinating. So I'll put the link down below. And also, if you haven't seen my other video on atherosclerosis and this biofilm mechanism, I put that video up right here. Check it out.